COPD is a chronic inflammatory lung disease that causes obstructed airflow from the lungs. It's primarily caused by long-term exposure to irritating gases or particulate matter, most often from cigarette smoke. The two types of COPD are emphysema and chronic bronchitis, which we'll talk more about in the next lesson. The management of COPD involves the following. Low flow oxygen therapy, for example, a nasal cannula at 1 to 2 liters per minute. Long acting bronchodilators, inhaled corticosteroids, smoking cessation, patient education, pulmonary rehab, avoiding triggers, avoiding recurrent infections, influenza vaccine, pneumococcal pneumonia vaccine, living a healthy lifestyle, and preventing hospitalizations. And remember, the goal of COPD management is to help the patient improve their quality of life and ability to perform activities of daily living. And now for an exam hack. For COPD patients, low flow oxygen is recommended to keep their SpO2 between 88 and 92%. Remember, this range is acceptable and preferred for patients with COPD. For a stable COPD patient, ABG results will show compensated respiratory acidosis. For an acute exacerbation, the ABG results will likely show uncompensated respiratory acidosis. And now for some other signs and symptoms of an acute exacerbation, which involve worsening symptoms such as dyspnea, shortness of breath, wheezing, chest tightness, tachycardia, tachypnea, hypoxemia, cyanosis, coughing, increased mucus production, use of accessory muscles while breathing, and peripheral edema. And now for some key points. You can recommend low flow oxygen therapy to treat hypoxemia. And keep in mind that you may have to use a higher FiO2 for an acute exacerbation. You can recommend short acting bronchodilators and anticholinergic agents for wheezing and bronchoconstriction. You can also recommend systemic steroids. Recommend a chest x-ray, monitor the patient's ABGs, recommend BiPAP for ventilatory failure because if possible, you want to try to avoid intubation. And if the patient's condition continues to worsen, intubation and mechanical ventilation would be indicated. And just a reminder, in general, COPD patients are difficult to wean from mechanical ventilation. Therefore, non-invasive ventilation, such as BiPAP, is preferred. Just know that you should adjust the settings to strive to achieve a normal pH, even though the PaCO2 may be abnormal and compensated. As previously mentioned, the two types of COPD are emphysema and chronic bronchitis. Emphysema is characterized by damage to the alveoli leading to shortness of breath and reduced oxygen intake. It causes the alveoli to overstretch and lose their elasticity, making it difficult for the lungs to expel air effectively. This causes air to become trapped in the lungs, reducing the surface area available for gas exchange. Chronic bronchitis involves long-term inflammation of the bronchial tubes. This condition is characterized by a persistent cough that produces mucus for at least three months in a year for two consecutive years. The inflamed bronchial tubes produce a lot of mucus, leading to coughing and difficulty breathing. Many patients with COPD show signs and symptoms of both disorders. Both types of patients often have a smoking history or a history of occupational exposure to lung irritants. However, there are a few characteristics that can help you differentiate between the two in order to correctly hmm. diagnose the patient, which is what we're going to discuss in this video. First, let's talk about the patient's appearance. Emphysema patients are often described as pink puffers due to labored breathing, air trapping, and hyperinflation. They also show signs of pursed lip breathing, barrel chest, use of accessory muscles, and digital clubbing. Chronic bronchitis patients are often described as blue bloaters due to chronic hypoxemia and cyanosis. Patients with emphysema often show signs of severe dyspnea, where chronic bronchitis patients 
show signs of mild dyspnea. Patients with emphysema may have a cough that is not immediate with little mucus, whereas patients with chronic bronchitis often show an immediate cough for at least three months in a year for two consecutive years, and the cough is usually productive with a lot of purulent mucus. The breath sounds for patients with emphysema are often diminished and may show signs of wheezing. The breath sounds of patients with chronic bronchitis may show signs of ronchi and wheezing. The ABG results for patients with emphysema often show compensated respiratory acidosis with moderate hypoxemia. A chronic bronchitis patient's ABGs may also show respiratory acidosis with moderate hypoxemia. The chest x-ray for patients with emphysema may show an increased AP diameter of the chest or a barrel chest appearance with a flattened diaphragm and a small heart. The chest x-ray for a patient with chronic bronchitis, on the other hand, often shows increased cardiothoracic ratio, flattened diaphragm, and a large heart. Chest percussion for patients with emphysema will reveal a hyperresonant percussion note. For chronic bronchitis, the chest percussion note will be normal. The PFT results for patients with both emphysema and chronic bronchitis will show decreased flow rates. Lung volumes for emphysema patients will show increased residual volume and total lung capacity. For chronic bronchitis, it will also show an increased residual volume. A diffusing capacity for carbon monoxide tests for patients with emphysema will be decreased. And for patients with chronic bronchitis, it will be normal. And the lung compliance for patients with emphysema is often increased. And for chronic bronchitis, it is often normal. And remember that airway clearance therapy is recommended for patients with chronic bronchitis to help clear secretions. And if the patient is dehydrated, you can recommend fluids, which will also help break up the mucus. Asthma is a common long-term inflammatory disease of the airways of the lungs. It is characterized by variable and recurring symptoms, reversible airflow obstruction, and easily triggered bronchospasm. An asthma episode is often caused by certain triggers such as cigarette smoke, dust, pollen, mold, cold air, dry air, certain foods, fragrances, and stress. Some signs and symptoms to be aware of include wheezing, coughing, chest tightness, shortness of breath, tachycardia, tachypnea, hypoxemia, increased AP chest diameter, and pursed lip breathing. Asthma episodes can range in severity from minor to life-threatening. ABG results may show respiratory alkalosis or appear normal in mild cases. However, as the condition worsens, the patient may show signs of respiratory acidosis and hypoxemia. And here's a quick exam hack for you to remember. Auscultation in a patient with asthma often reveals wheezing due to obstructed airways. However, if the patient's breath sounds are absent or diminished, this indicates a lack of airflow and the patient's condition is more severe. And now for some key points. You can recommend oxygen therapy for hypoxemia. Recommend aerosolized bronchodilator therapy for wheezing and bronchoconstriction. Recommend inhaled corticosteroids. You can also recommend xanthine medications. Recommend a pre and post bronchodilator PFT study to assess airway reversibility. Recommend peak flow monitoring. And recommend systemic steroids for an asthma attack. If the patient does not respond to bronchodilators and other treatments, status asthmaticus is likely. This condition is more severe and may require intubation and mechanical ventilation for impending ventilatory failure. For these patients, recommend continuous bronchodilator treatments. And heliox therapy may also be indicated. And one more thing, here's an exam hack and general rule for when to intubate a patient. Remember that intubation is always recommended for severe respiratory acidosis. And this is the case when the pH is less than 7.25 or the PaCO2 is greater than 60. You can also look for severe oxygenation. And this occurs when the PF ratio is less than 200. 
and you can look for severe tachypnea, which occurs when the patient has a respiratory rate that is greater than 35 breaths per minute. Bronchiectasis is a chronic obstructive respiratory condition characterized by the abnormal and permanent enlargement of the bronchi. This dilation is often the result of an infection or other condition that injures the walls of the airways or prevents the airways from clearing mucus. This results in large quantities of purulent mucus in the airways, which causes difficulty breathing. Some signs and symptoms to look for include shortness of breath, pursed lip breathing, productive cough with excessive mucus production, foul-smelling mucus, barrel chest, recurrent respiratory infections, use of accessory muscles, and digital clubbing. Auscultation may reveal either diminished breath sounds, ronchi, or wheezing. And a chest x-ray is recommended, but a CT scan is required for the diagnosis of bronchiectasis. And now for some more key points. Airway clearance therapy is recommended to help the patient clear secretions such as chest physiotherapy or PEP therapy. Lung expansion therapy is recommended to treat or prevent atelectasis, such as incentive spirometry or deep breathing and coughing. You can recommend inhaled bronchodilators to treat bronchospasm. The patient may benefit from expectorants to help with coughing up secretions. You can recommend antibiotics if the patient is showing signs of infection. Recommend oxygen therapy to treat or prevent hypoxemia. And recommend intubation and mechanical ventilation for ventilatory failure. We've already helped thousands of students pass the board exam. And if you're looking for the same result, check out some of our premium resources, which I have provided links to below in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I wish you all the best on your journey to becoming a registered respiratory therapist. Have a nice day and thanks again for watching.